All right, we turn our attention now to the man himself, Brian Baldinger. Baldy, thank you for for taking the time this week. A, a quick turnaround after the late night game last night. That's all right, Bo. I mean, that's uh, it's, you know, week eleven is in the books. It's Thanksgiving week. I had a good chance to break it down this morning, kind of go through it, and so uh, you know, it was. Look, they they had to play in the elements last night. Had to play on the road. Not easy winning at uh, Arrowhead. Uh, you know, Lane Johnson has played there four times prior to last night, never won a game. It's a hard place to play. It's a hard place to win. And the Eagles found a way to get it done. Yeah, I have, I have like, there have been several games this season where I have been underwhelmed and you, you sort of feel like it's a win, but it wasn't their best performance. I feel like the conversation this week, like people are having that conversation, but in Arrowhead, as you said, on a bye against Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes, the team that just beat you in the Super Bowl. Like, I'm so, you take that win however you can get it. Um, I thought I was, I was very impressed. No, it was impressive. I mean, they shut the Kansas City Chiefs out in the second half. Um, you know, but I, I thought the, you know, the two plays that they made defensively, you got to credit Howie Roseman. I mean, they go and make a trade for Kevin Byer at the trade deadline. He comes in and he picks Mahomes off in the end zone on a throw to Justin Watson. They take points off the board. I mean, that's what Byron has been doing for six years in this league. So, like, that's just who he is. He made a great play on the ball. I mean, Mahomes will tell you that he, you know, he left it short, which he did. But still, Byron made the play, made the read. And then, you know, they pick up Bradley Roby because they don't have a good nickel back. And, you know, he's in there and he punches the ball out of Kelsey's hands. At the eight-yard line, Nick Morrow recovers. The two biggest plays of the game defensively for the Eagles were made by midseason acquisitions. And that's really what they are. They're here to win it all. And all they do is keep building and adding whatever they think is necessary. And both those players came up huge last night. I think that's very well said. And I also think part of the credit for that has to, to go to Sean Desai too, right? For incorporating these guys into the defense, all these guys coming in from different places. We've talked about it before. Um, what did you make of, of the game plan from Sean Desai in this game, it seemed like uh, he was a little bit more willing to go after Patrick Mahomes than maybe we had seen him do. And this whole conversation about what do you do against the best quarterbacks in the league, this performance I thought was was pretty encouraging. Well, I mean, Travis Kelsey didn't have a catch in the first quarter. You know, they doubled him. And, you know, on the, on the throw over the top at the end of the game to Marquez Valdez-Scantling, they triple team Kelsey. And they left Roby one-on-one with Scantling, and he got behind them. But, you know, Mahomes is going to throw it to the open guy. So they took Kelsey away, and, you know, Mahomes threw it to a guy who's got inconsistent hands. It's who MVS has been throughout his career. He's got elite speed. We People recognize that. But, you know, he drops him, and he catches him. He dropped that one, a chance to, you know, go take the lead. So uh, I thought Sean has done a really good job, to be honest with you. Uh, he rotated his defense line, and he kept him fresh. I thought they affected Mahomes. You know, anytime Mahomes is scrambling, albeit, look, he gets a lot of first downs, he extends a lot of drives. But if he's running it, that means he's not throwing it. And he's not probably getting it to one of these guys that can beat you down the field. You'd rather see Mahomes almost running it in some cases versus staying in the pocket and having time to find one of his receivers. And then the other thing was, I thought it was interesting that um, on – the throw to, uh, I guess it was uh, Watson uh, in the end zone, um, you know, they really, they, they ran the same motion that they ran in the Super Bowl for touchdowns. And yes. Sean decided made sure that they weren't going to run across the formation and that stuff. And they made him go someplace else with the ball. Uh, one, one thing that I wanted to ask you about was the, the blitzes in this game. There were big blitzes being sent by Sean Desai, six or more guys going the most that he had done in a game this season was three. He did it seven times in this game. If you sort of just think through what he was trying to accomplish on that, what what's what would be the explanation for that? Well, you, you're trying to speed up the process of Mahomes and give him less time. Like, for example, um, you know, on the interception, uh, well, I mean, he's just trying to speed up the process right. of trying to get the ball out quicker and try to get a free hitter to Mahomes where he's got to make quicker decisions. Um, you know, and maybe he can't get the ball to the, his star receiver. So I think, you, you know, against Mahomes, you have to mix it up. If you just play all zone and try to keep it in front of you, he'll carve you up. If you try to play just man, and he's going to dial up man beaters. And so you got to mix in the blitzes 
to try and keep them guessing and keep them off balance, just the way Spags did on his defensive side to do the same thing uh, to Jalen. I, I think that um, so much of the focus on the drops, right, sort of takes away if you're Sean Desai and you're g- going into this game game planning, you're probably thinking, I want those wide receivers to beat me because everybody knows those wide receivers are not very good. And so as much as we can like bemoan the drops and say, well, if, if he catches that, the game is different. That's part of the calculus that, that Desai was probably making in, in putting the game plan together. Uh, in terms of the run defense, Baldy, they get you know a big first half for Isaiah Pacheco. They run for over 120 yards in the first half. This defensive line has been so dominant it has been a long time since we have seen uh, like them lose the line of scrimmage like they did in that first half. What jumped out to you and, and what, if anything, changed in the second half? Well, first of all, they didn't call any holding calls. So, you know, they didn't qualify <laughs> some of those runs. So, I mean, they just let the they just let guys play. I mean, Creed Humphrey and Jalen Carter, uh, I don't know exactly if, if a bear hug is a legal block, but it's a bear hug. <laughs> You know, but they didn't call it. And then, look, I, I give the Chiefs credit. That interior three of Trey Smith, Creed Humphrey, and Joe Tooney, they're about as good as there is in this league. And they they blocked him up pretty good. And Pacheco's a good runner. And so if you try to arm tackle him, he breaks arm tackles. I mean, honestly, they went big on big. Andy Reid, you know, decided to do that in the second half in the Super Bowl game last year. And they did the same thing to the Eagles. Um, now, running the ball like they did doesn't produce a lot of points. You can possess the ball. You can have more plays. You can control the line of scrimmage. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to score more points. I mean, they kept them to 17 points. So while they surrendered, you know, a lot of rushing yards in the first half, um, they didn't give up a lot of points. Well, and they certainly didn't give up any points in the second half. Let's let's flip sides of the ball, Baldy. Um, you talked about Spags. There was this, this long period in the game, right, where the Eagles just could not get anything going on offense. Uh, several three and outs. Jalen Hurts seemed a little bit flummoxed. What was what was Spags doing to uh, change the picture and and really mess with the protection? Well, they 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 blitz their corners more than any other team in the league. So whether it was Legarius Sneed or Trent McDuffie, they're coming off the edge. The Eagles didn't pick it up one time, and McDuffie came clean. Carl Loftus ended up with the sack. Chris Jones, there was a stretch in the game when Chris Jones literally made every play. Yeah, like probably over you know a. I don't know, half a quarter. He, he literally made every play inside. I mean, he, he could do that, you know? And so I think they were sacked five times just in the second quarter, Bo. Um, but they they survived all those. You know, they they didn't they, – they threw the interception. They did get the ball fumbled, and, but, you know, Jalen somehow got the ball back. But other than that, you know, the interception came on a blitz zero. Uh, you know, A.J.'s got his hand up in the air. He sees there's no safety there. And, you know, it's LeJarrius Sneed in coverage. And, you know, Jalen, look, I, nobody can nobody can see exactly what Jalen's seeing when a sea of red is just coming out of it. And so, yeah, you'd love to, if you had to do it all over, just throw the ball to an open patch of grass, let A.J. go get it. But it's not, it's not always like that. It's not always just a clean picture. So they had a shot there. They could have burned them. They had a good play on to beat it. It just wasn't the right throw. But, you know, Spags came after them in a lot of different ways. And the pressure affected the rhythm. It affected their passing game. Um, but yet, you know, when it came time to it, they made the big play down the field to Devontae Smith, you know, to basically give them the game-winning drive. And they converted their deep shots, and Kansas City didn't convert any of theirs. It, it's it, it's interesting. The You know, the Eagles put so much focus on stopping Travis Kelsey, limiting him. They did a good job and made everybody else beat them. They weren't able to do it. The Chiefs, even while sending all that heat at Jalen Hurts, obviously were, were putting a lot of focus on stopping A.J. Brown. They were able to do that, but because of Devontae Smith, the Eagles able to, to make the big play. Was there anything specific that the Chiefs were doing to, to stop A.J. Brown? Well, on the, on the throw to Devontae, I mean, that's what we call a spray fade from the slot. They doubled A.J. Brown. They doubled him from, you know, from the corner and from you know, the inside linebacker. So they bracketed him, and they left – Devontae one-on-one and Jalen did exactly what he should do. He should throw to the open receiver. And, you know, Devontae got behind Mike Edwards and Jalen threw maybe the best ball by any quarterback all night in that, in that throw. You, uh, you know how it is in Philadelphia, Baldy, you know, that even though the Eagles are nine and one, people are upset about uh, Brian Johnson. They're, they're saying what's going on here. I, I wonder if you could explain like the, the, the focus on the wide receiver screens, the way that this game was going 
What is going through Brian Johnson's head in thinking that that's where they have the the advantage on those those play calls? Well, first of all, the Kansas City Chiefs have as good a defense as anybody in football. So Spags has great corners. He's got fast linebackers, and he's got a disruptive defensive line. Like, nobody is moving the ball, and nobody is scoring a bunch of points against Kansas City uh, all year long. I mean, they're, they're off, their defense is better than their offense. So you have to credit some of the things that – and then Spags has won three Super Bowls. Like, he knows how to deploy these guys, and they're the youngest defense in football. So, you know, you, you think, all right, well, you got all this firepower, um, you know, at the defensive line position, let's get the ball in the perimeter as quickly as you can. Like, there's one play in the game, second play of the game, like, I don't know what the play was supposed to be. They handed it off to DeAndre Swift on an outside zone. They didn't block Chris Jones, and they ran everybody else on a wide receiver screen. And so sometimes I just think there was some miscommunication on some of the plays, uh, either how they ca- came in or how they were called or how they were communicated. And that can happen at Arrowhead in those kind of you know places on the road like that. Last one before we let you go, Baldy. Uh, just quickly turning our attention to the Bills. What is your sort of 10,000-foot view on, on what has been going wrong with them this season, why they are where they are? Well, they've turned the ball over way too many times. They might, they might have turned it over more than any other team in the league or at the very bottom. So the turnovers have hurt them. They're running the ball really well right now. Uh, and so that's, that would be my first concern is how well they're running the ball, especially after what we saw Kansas City do in the first half. Uh, and then they've had injuries on defense, but, you know, former Eagle Rasul Douglas is starting at corner for me at two interceptions last week. Um, he's playing really, really well. He's a good corner. Um, you know, they had to overcome the loss of Matt Milano, and Von Miller doesn't look like Von Miller right now, but that might change. Uh, but ultimately, if you get Josh Allen moving, he can wow you with great hero-type plays that almost nobody else can make, but he also can turn the ball over. And so right now they're struggling in that department. And uh, that's what that's why they fired their offense coordinator uh, last week. And we'll see if things get corrected this week. You couldn't really tell against the pathetic Jets uh, performance last week. Well, if you like this insight from Brian Baldinger, the good news is you can get a lot more of it on the All right. NFL podcast with All City. Check that out wherever you listen to your podcast. Baldy, thank you for joining us. We'll talk to you next yeah. week. Thanks, Bo. Yep, I'll talk to you after I'll be here for this game Sunday in Buff- uh, against Buffalo, so I'm looking forward to calling it. Thank you very much. Yep, you bet. We all city like the mayor. 